everybody. I'm on the official NVIDIA channels. Isn't that cool? Um, so this is new. And I'm sure I might have some people who have never watched this before. I used to stream on my personal channels. And then I got the uh, notification that I would be switching over to the official channels, which is quite awesome. Um, my name is Ashley. I work for NVIDIA. I'm a connection evangelist for Omniverse Exchange, meaning my primary role is to work with external developers, helping them create tools and plugins for Omniverse. Uh, through tutorials, samples, all that good stuff, teaching workflows. And uh, when I first started NVIDIA, I had to learn Omniverse myself. I started this stream to help me do that with our community. So I spent a lot of time um, during the stream exploring connectors, tools, and different workflows that I haven't really engaged with before. So you can watch and hopefully help me um, debug some issues and see how someone would approach these for the first time. And um, I really like to highlight how great the Omniverse community is. And so if you see me struggling and either you know the answer or can help me uh, along, then please chat away and I will watch the chat and I'm pretty good at taking your advice. I also break a ton of things and it can get chaotic. So uh, be prepared for that. I'm also using StreamYard for the first time. And um, hopefully today I don't bring any break, break any StreamYard stuff. I tried to make it look very similar to what I was using in OBS when I was just doing Twitch, but now I'm doing like YouTube, Twitch, and LinkedIn, and uh, it, it might get a little out of out of whack, out of sorts, however you want to say it. I used to play music while I was streaming too, and like StreamYard has it, so let's see if that works. They have like a lo-fi beat, which I really love, and uh, you can play it as background music, so I think y'all can hear that. I'm just going to lower it a little bit, and uh, I have to share my screen. It's very different than what I've done before. I can share, like, just... Okay, it, it works the same as everything else. You guys are, like, going to bear with me as I figure this out for the first time. How do I select, like, one screen? Oh, there we go. Okay. Cool. Now I'm on, like, the side. So in my other streams, I used to be, like, a little cut out um that was like overlaid oh kind of like this but my i would be like cut out around it so um i don't i don't like that i'm blocking things so i'm just gonna go back to this hopefully y'all can read that pretty well if uh if you can't read it and you are on the 1080 quality let me know so i can adjust settings i always want to make sure you guys can see what i'm doing and just to like recap what i've been doing before I have been exploring like a game development workflow. I connected Unreal Engine in my previous streams and now I have moved into Isaac Sim where I was creating conveyor belts. So if you see my scene here, let's make this bigger so y'all can see. And yeah, I have these conveyor belts. I did this in Isaac Sim and um, I'm using the production version so y'all can use it too if you need a reminder you haven't watched me do this before to get the conveyor belt tool builder you have to go to window extensions this window pops up and you type in conveyor and this you have to enable it i keep it on auto load because i've been using it a lot but it will not default to auto load so you'll have to enable it every time you open up Isaac Sim when you want to use it unless you click auto load. So just that, let me dock the extensions window just so we can come back to it later if we need to. And then it doesn't, as you see, nothing changed. So you have to go into tools, conveyor track builder. And you can create your own customized conveyor belt assets, but um, if you use the conveyor builder, it gives you like these conveyor belts and they already have like a tileable texture on it so that when you play, I gotta give a second to think. Is it possible to share my project? Um, 
you know what? I should probably start putting that on. I could probably put it on GitHub here. You know, the cool thing about StreamYard is I can show comments. That's cool. Is it possible to share my project? I will look in to see how I can put this on GitHub and then I can share it out so y'all can keep up with me at each time. All right. I created a cube camera so we can watch the cube. And uh, yeah, so you can see like the conveyor track moving and you can get these assets from the conveyor builder or you can make your own little conveyor belts. There is um, conveyor belt documentation and it tells you how to do it like a step-by-step. -step. So I, I followed this during my streams. So I'll actually post that in the chat for you guys. So if you wanna go read that documentation, you can. This is exactly how I followed along. I was able to build my conveyor belt. So it worked really well, but I am done building the conveyor belt. I, it works great after some finagling with physics material which are in my old streams. Oh, those are not on the official NVIDIA channels. Those are on my old, on my personal one. And I'll also put that in the chat. So when you guys go to my personal Twitch channel, you can watch older streams. So you can see how I had to do the physics material and stuff, but I'm not gonna go over that today. I am not doing Unreal anymore. Not a noob question. Yeah, a lot of you guys have not watched my Learn With Me's because they were on different channels and now I'm on the NVIDIA Omniverse one. So that's actually a really great question. I've already connected it and got it working before, but now I wanna build conveyor belt. So I've kind of paused on the Unreal Engine connector and um, I'm just working in Isaacson. And then last stream specifically, I created these action graphs. I'm gonna go into my I've created my own layout. I really love using action graphs. So I created my own layout and this is how I edit all my action graphs so I can see my action graphs bigger. Let's do the, the this one. This is the cube one. I made like a really janky third person camera. <laughs> it's not the best. It's just like a camera constraint using action graph, um, using a constant point. So like I read my, let's go to my third person camera. Press play. Give it a second. Do I have a chat mod? No, I'm doing all this myself. <laughs> Oh yeah, Papa Chuck, I know. I did not stream, I started playing the Harry Potter game last night and uh, I didn't stream it. I got a little nervous with like streaming games. I don't know, it's, it's easier to stream this stuff than it is to stream games. So I just, I played the Harry Potter game, the Hogwarts Legacy game for like five hours last night and I, I had to force myself to go to bed, which was very difficult to do. Where is my guy? There's my capsule. But yeah, I'm a personal one. I would like to start streaming this like regular stuff because all my Omniverse work stuff is gonna be here now. But we'll see. Where where are you, capsule? Oh, I messed up the rotation, that's why. So I made this like really janky third person camera. So whenever my capsule character moves, like the camera stays with it the only problem is we did that with the cube camera and so whenever the cube like turns around it doesn't follow the cube properly kind of stays in a, a constant point point. and so i wanted to i want to see if i can create a better camera constraint i was watching dave tyner's live sync on friday that he does um, with a couple other people and he had a really cool camera constraint that when like the sphere moved around it kind of like rotated around the sphere so I would like to do something like that I looked at that how that action graph was created it was a little confusing so we're going to try to do that today so that when this when things rotate like even the character controller it moves around and doesn't stay in, in a constant point um, I was thinking about doing 
uh, viewport UI using Action Graph. And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. Let's pause this. So let's go to, how do I go back to like a basic layout? Can I like reset my layout? Doesn't let me. I don't know. So let's just go to, not Isaac samples. I can't reset my layout. That's annoying. In Create, you can. Isaac Sims is a little bit different. How do I get my... I want to get the, the samples up. Window, browsers, nope. Ugh, I'm just going to... Restart Isaac Sim, and then I'm gonna save that layout as like a basic layout. Bring up my launcher. So here's my Omniverse launcher I'm using Isaac Sim. My launcher will look a little bit different than you guys because mine's an internal one, but so you guys, yours will just say Isaac Sim on it. But I did sleep. I, I went to bed. I got I got seven hours of sleep, even though I played the Harry Potter game. I did really good. Yeah, there is a lot of drama on that game, which is why I'm also like kind of nervous to stream it. So, well, yeah, I'm not gonna stream that to my personal one for a while. I saw this thing where this poor girl got bullied on Twitch about it and um, yeah, I don't know. I understand it, but it's just, it's unfortunate. So I just played it by myself last night. It's a fun game. It's beautiful. And if you have a ray tracing card, turn ray tracing on. It is a whole different world. It's probably the first game I've played with ray tracing and it's amazing. Let's save this layout so that I don't have to keep doing that. We're gonna go into my layout. We'll call this basic layout. All right, so I was trying, I, the reason I reset it is because I wanted to get to samples at the bottom here. What's the price of the Hogwarts Legacy game? I bought it early release and it was like 70 US dollars for early release. It doesn't come out for public release until uh, February 10th. But if you want to play early, you gotta pay a little extra. You get like some cool things if you do that. Anyway, I'm not, this is the, no one's paying me to say that. I'm saying that because I just love the game and I thought it was cool. All right, so I um, am, I talked about the viewport UI in using Action Graph and I got that idea because there's these visual scripting samples in the samples browser. And um, if you go into the light bulb one specifically, you have these UI elements right here in the viewport so that they're not like these little boxes. Like this is considered UI, right? But um, you can't see it in your viewport. If I click play, I also have these UI elements as well. And they are widgets in the viewport. So when I click them, they do stuff, but I can also just click the light bulb itself or the switch and they work Why I click play. So this is what I meant by viewport UI with action graph. Now, if I cannot, that's, I'm either gonna do that today or I'm gonna do that, what's today, Wednesday, Monday. Cause my streams are Monday and Wednesdays at this time always. So we'll see if I get to that today or Monday. For now, I'm gonna go back to my, oops, not that one. Oh shoot, I clicked the wrong thing. Now it's gonna take forever to load. I have coupons from NVIDIA for the Epic Store. What do you mean? What are you talking about, Papa Chuck? How do I not know this? You've been trying to figure out how to make a point of view camera that can move around and interact with objects. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm sort of doing that. I'm using action graph to do that. So that's visual scripting. And where do we find the light bulb sam sample? That is in, um, so 
This is Isaac Sim. I'm pretty sure when you open up Create, it's the same thing. There's this samples here at the bottom. Uh, or like it'll be next to like NVIDIA Asset Store and Create. And it's the visual scripting. And you have all three or all four of these examples so that you can actually open up the graph and you can see how they built it. I think on the roadmap for these, there's some tutorials in the works, but uh, there's no tutorials yet. So you just kind of have to like, they, they do have these backdrops that tell you what what's doing what. So this is creating the UI. This is the info text. So that's the this stuff at the bottom, the light, light switch and color switch. So you can look and see what they're all doing. That, that's kind of how I've been learning Action Graph as well. Okay. Sorry if I'm falling behind on these chats. I am not used to this kind of streaming. This is very different for me. I'm used to like Papa Chuck and like Zia being the only ones that talk to me <laughs> on my streams. So this is different. I'm getting distracted. So go to my projects, Unreal, February 1st. I've been naming each of my layers with like the date that I've been doing them. All right. Let this load. And I basically want to just fix the uh, camera constraint graph I have. Or maybe I'll just make a new one, not fix it. I'm gonna make a new one. So let's go back into my layout. Nope, not that. And let's create a new action graph. And um, I think I need to create a new X form. Papa Chuck kind of mentioned this last stream is like, this was for the cube camera, creating an X form to it so it's easier to see it. But I think I need to create an X form separate from the capsule. So I have like the capsule inside of the X form and then I can just read to that X form. Sorry, I'm like looking at the chat. Just trying to make sure I'm not like missing anything. Okay, so I'm gonna create an X form and I wanted to, oops, I put it. That's not what I wanna do. Let's uh, put the X form under the world and then the capsule goes in that X form. And then I want to read the X form. I wanna, yeah, read it. And I wanna read its translation. Oh, I need to make sure the X form is at the right place. So it will automatically set it at the world origin. And if I, oh, I hope Isaac Sim has the pivot tool. Tools, pivot, yes, awesome. So let's add a pivot and it places the pivot of the X form. Just make sure I'm just gonna click center pivot just to make sure. Cool, and then uh, let's just click set pivot and there you go easy enough so I don't have to like move that around and we got that I want to break up this uh like want to grab its x its vectors or it's uh it's three values so I'm going to break that apart 
So I'm pressing tab, by the way. I always watch like tutorials and when someone does like a quick search like this, I'm like, how'd you do that? And, uh, and then I make the same mistake and like forget to say it out loud. So I press tab and it brings up this quick search. I find it it's better than this search. So break uh, the three vector and uh, let's attach that there. And I'm going to have three breakouts for X, Y, and Z. And I want to be able to edit their, their positions or their values individually. So I'm going to create some custom variables to do that. So I going to have three variables. This one I'm going to call X position. This one is going to be Y. And then the last one is going to be Z. And they are going to be a double. Each of them. And I'm going to throw, let's just like set this to like a 0.5. No, let's like set them to zero for now. And then we'll mess with them as, uh, as we go along. We're going to read all three of them. Cool. And I want to be able to... adjust the value of the X form in increments of these positions, if that makes sense. So I'm not like replacing them. I'm just adding small amounts of small increments to each position. So I need an increment for all three, I'm just pressing control D for duplicate to get more of those. And I'm gonna plug all of these in and then start plugging in the X, Y, and Z. That's what I love about visual scripting. It's just like so easy to just loop loop them together. Uh, why? Did I chose double over other types? Well, for one, the double is compatible um, with the variable here. Let's go see it here. So in this, there's some documentation. I will add that to the chat. And this has all the node library descriptions. So let's type in double. I don't want a constant double, I just want a regular double. Does it tell me what's like two double? No. Converts the given input to 64-bit double. The node will attempt to convert array and tuple inputs to doubles of the same shape. And it's, it's a value. So that's what I want to be compatible with in my... Oh, no, where'd my Isaac Sim go? This one. So I want it to be compatible with the values of my vectors um so i'm changing i'm adding to like say i have an x position i'm adding to this x so i'm increasing in value so that's why i'm using double rather than a flow or an integer or a point or any other 
vector. Okay, so I have my three vectors. I'm going to be increasing X, Y, and Z in small increment increments. And then I'm going to turn them back into a vector. So we need, I type in vector. I wanna make a make three vector. That's what I want. So the result will be the increment of X plus the value as our final X, our final Y, our final Z. Okay. And I want my camera to look at this value, right? I think so. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So I think I read my camera to it. Where are you, camera? Third person camera. I think I'm gonna put my camera in an X form too. So let's click on the world, create X form. And I'm gonna add this camera to that X form. And I'm gonna read this X form. I'm reading its translation because I want to make it, I want its translation to look at the other one. And make transformation matrix looks at. So it makes a transformation matrix from I center world space position and an up vector. So my eye is the camera. The center world space position is the capsule. And then I need to create an up vector. Mm, so I plug this into the eye and then because that's the camera's my eye, or at least that's how I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Read for camera. Yeah, I put the camera in this X form. I think it will work. And then I need to make an up, an up vector. So I need to create a custom variable. So I, cr I clicked add, it gave me a new variable and this one's gonna be up vector. And this one has to be a vector. So I need to make it one. That's gonna be a vector 3D. And my up is Z. So I'm just gonna add one to Z cause that's my up direction. And I'm going to read that and plug it into up. So I also want it to rotate. So the problem that I was having with the, the really janky one that I made was that it followed it at a constant point. And that meant wherever this capsule moved, that camera was always going to be at that point uh, in relation to where the capsule is in the world. So instead of doing that, I'm saying to the camera, you're going to follow the new vector of the capsule and 
you're gonna look at that vector instead of like just following it, you're gonna look at it, but I also want to adjust the rotation of it as well. So if the capsule rotates, the camera is going to make up for that too. And so I'm gonna rotation. Oops, I turned caps on. Like I'm yelling at the search. Rotation, get rotation. So plug that in. Cool, it worked. And then uh, in in the action craft that I saw from Dave Tyner's camera constraint. There was a, a node called negate. I don't truly understand what this does. It says it computes the result of multiplying a vector, scalar, or array of vectors by negative one. So yeah, I, I mean, I understand what it's doing, but I don't understand like why it needs to be connected. But in their graph, that's what they had. Maybe someone else understands that a little bit better than I do, but I'm gonna put it there because that's what they had. Yeah, orbit, right? I'm orbiting the camera around with my rotation. Good, that's a good word, orbit. All right, so now I'm going to be writing back into the camera. So I, I want all of this graph to now make the camera do it. So I'm going to grab that X formal one again that I did not rename all well. And I'm going to write to it and I'm writing to its translation. And this is going to change its value. Now I talked about this in the last stream. This is an action graph. It's not a push graph. So this needs to be told when to execute. In push graph, it just happens as soon as you press play. I need to tell this when to happen. Is it going to happen on play? Is it going to happen when something changes? Is it all of the above? Yes, it's all of the above. So um, I'm going to do on tick. So it happens when I press play. And then I want it to adjust when I change the capsule. Yes. So on USD object change, this one. And my target is the X form that holds my capsule. And that's also going to execute the graph. Okay. I'm gonna save this because I have not saved it. Save. And now I didn't change any of these positions. So no, I don't think anything's gonna happen. Let's let's test it out. Oh, let me I have two graphs affecting this capsule right now. So whoopsies, hold on one second. I might have to like that other graph I'm gonna have to disconnect so that it doesn't happen on play. I hope that doesn't cause any issues and it, I don't I don't think it was gonna crash. I guess we'll see. It's you know, moving around. On tick is for each interval the playhead moves. On tick is like the timeline. Like, so if I press play and like I had the timeline going, you, you'd be able to see and it just means like it's happening at that play. I think it like explains it, so. Oh, it just says, <laughs> here, let's go to, go to this one. There's update tick event. That's not the one I want. On tick. Executes an output execution pulse at regular multiples of the refresh rate. Okay. Um, I gotta stop this. Well, where did that camera even go? It's like black. 
Uh, let's go to my other camera. I don't even know what happened to that poor camera. It like got thrown off the screen. Where are you? How in the world did you end up out here? Probably because I don't have anything happening in the graph. I have like two graphs of graphs affecting it. So let's go to the first graph and open. So this was my janky third person where I was just looking at it through a constant point. So let's go ahead and disconnect. So I right click on that and click disconnect and uh, go back into the graph I made for the camera constraint using the concept from Dave Tyner's camera constraint. And uh, let's adjust the X position. So I go into my custom variable and I'm gonna do 0.5. Does that change it or do I have to like, I, should, I don't, I shouldn't have to like pull it out again, right? Let's see. No, it's like the same. I think it should update that one. And then I want to adjust the Y position. Let's just do 0.5 again. And press play. Got to compile everything. We're making good time. This stream is an hour long, so I'm going to be ending it in 20 minutes. And I try to get everything done as soon as I can. I, I had I try to like have like a goal and then meet that goal within an hour. And then only doing the stream twice a week. Uh, I feel like I've made good progress within the month of January. Like I started this workflow like right after the new year and I have gotten pretty far, I think. Just like two hours a week. Well, not even that because I was streaming like only once a week before that. Let's, uh, let's leave. It's not like at a constant point, so it's not constantly looking at it. Let's go click. I clicked F in this viewport so that I'm focusing on it. Now, if I move my capsule, it doesn't work. So, why don't you work? Is it... Maybe... It doesn't seem like it... No, it is adding this value. It's... This is not reading the value of the prim. It's, it's not reading it. Do I need to read the actual capsule itself? Oh, you know why? I know why. Re undo all that. I think I need to move the X form. Nope. It's supposed to like follow it, but it's not. What if I. That's zero. What if this is one? Okay, so now it's reading it. No. Okay, so. And this is zero and this is zero. The up vector. I did one. I feel like maybe I'm missing something. Hmm. Oh, you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not recognizing when the eye changes. Let's press pause. So I have, when I press play, it looks for when this changes and then 
It should also update when the change of the camera. Uh, the, so, USD change. And target is the camera's X form. Right? Maybe that's what I'm missing. Okay, now let's press play. Thankfully, I have not experienced any crashes today. If you don't use Omniverse very often, I've discovered that when it says not responding, you just don't touch it <laughs> and it will not crash. It just has to take some time to compile. Okay, so, ah, uh, shoot, it doesn't work. What am I missing? I'm not doing something properly. I'm going to stop it. All right. So I'm going to reveal something here. This is what I've been looking at. This is the one that the action graph that was sent for the camera constraint. I'm allowed to show it. So that's good. But I don't understand what I'm missing. I have all of theirs. I've been referring back to it, back and forth, and this is where I got that negate. Now I don't un really understand what this is doing. It's turning it into, it's turning that X value into a negative, or, oh, it, it it's, comes in as a negative and it's outputting as a positive. That's why it's multiplying it by a negative one. Okay, is that what's happening here? Yes, so it came in as a negative. And it's outputting as a positive. Perfect. And this is how I've been learning action graph is just like looking at them and trying to like recreate them and then seeing where I go wrong. And I have the on tick. I have when the uh, capsule changes, they call it center, when the camera changes or the eye, right? Their eye is the camera. I have an invert. What's what's the invert doing? I got the I invert. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that is affecting it. I don't imagine so. Quick review the last week's janky script as it was working. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, it works. I don't like it though. <laughs> Cause it does, I mean, it works fine, but I want, like, I really like this one. So if you look at this one, this is in Dave Tyner's live stream too. So it's the same exact function. Um, if you press play, oh no, it crashed. Did it? Or did I just click off screen? No. Okay. I thought it crashed. Oh, I scared myself. Uh, okay. So if you press play and then grab the X form, Oh, it's like super wonky, but like, look, as you move it, the camera adjusts. So it's following the rotation of the sphere so that it's always like positioned behind it or whatever, wherever we say to position it. And I, that's what I prefer. That's what I was trying to get today. May not. We may have to just do the review of why the other one worked just as fine for those who missed it. Could be using X form instead of camera directly. Um, not in their graph. They are using the X forms. So let's look. They're reading the center X form. Also reading the X form of the camera. Breaking it off into. X, Y, and Z for the sphere. Then they are adjusting the value in increments of 0 0.57, 0 0.58, whatever. And 
Y and Z are left alone. They have their for theirs. Y is up. Mine is Y or is it? oh maybe okay. Wait, 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 wait. Have y'all ever heard of the term rubber ducky programming? It's when um I'll show you. I learned about this when I was learning to program. Rubber ducky. Oops, <laughs> not like a real rubber ducky programming. So it's when you explain your programming out loud and I guess it happened because someone explained it to like a rubber duck. I usually like explain it to my dogs. When I was in school and I was learning all, how to do all this stuff, I would explain my code to my dogs and uh, saying it out loud sometimes helps you. So I think me just doing that, I have, might have figured out what's going on. Um, their Y is up, my Z is up. And I think that changes also my X and Y. Their X is my Y. That's what I think. So let's go to, I'm gonna put my X at zero and my Y might be the one that I do 0.5. Okay, let's try that. I'm saving because I haven't saved in a while and I keep forgetting to press play. Let it compile and do its thing. I have to be patient and not touch it and not click it, which is so hard to do. If anyone doesn't know my background, I was a teacher for four years. And uh, when we had, when we went to online learning during the pandemic, teaching middle school kids not to like click on everything while they wait th for things to load was probably one of the hardest things about online learning. It's like, let it load, stop clicking. You're making the computer think too hard and then everything crashes. Okay, let's try. So click on the X form. We wanna change the X form, not the capsule. Ah, uh, shoot, nope, <laughs> that did not make a difference. All right, let's review the other one again. And if we run out of time, then I'll just do an overview of the constant point action graph. Okay, so I have my double values so that I'm changing the value of X in small increments, but not of Y, not of Z. I changed mine to be Y. It turns these all into vectors and then it makes that transformation matrix look at the rotation and I'm grabbing the translation of the camera i'm adjusting its up value by one for them that's y for me that's z then i so i'm grabbing the rotation i'm making the camera look at that and then i'm turning that negative value into a positive value by multiplying it by negative one and that is happening on tick when the center eye changes, when, or when the center changes, which is a sphere, or when the, and when the camera changes. That's all happening here. This is a, a print statement, so you don't have to worry about that so that they could debug. Um, what am I doing wrong? Oh, rotate X, Y, Z. Look at that, the, the attribute name. That's probably, that, please be it. Look, I did translate, I'm changing the rotation. So, where is it? I did not let me look at it. Click this. What, where is it? Shouldn't it be rotate X, Y, Z? Let's delete, bring that back in. We're writing to it. 
something's different. Something's different about theirs. Negative times a negative equals a positive. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> Math stuff. Negative times a negative equals positive. No, I think it's, yeah, because it's if, a, if it's a positive times a negative, then it turns it into two negatives make a positive. Yeah. Making me question myself. Okay. Something's different about their X form for their camera than mine. And that is this invert that they've rotated 180 degrees or no, actually they probably added their own attribute. So X, Y, Z. Am I just, did I just like, am I just like overlooking it? Orient. Is that the same? Why does mine look different? There says rotate X, Y, Z. Mine says orient. Let's try it. Attach everything again. And output the value. Oops. No, it doesn't want to do that. It says something's wrong. Because it's not the orientation, it's the X, Y, Z. Rotate X, Y, Z. What is different about their X form? Rotate. Let's look at my X form. Orient. Oh. Let's add rotate. That's why I don't have rotate. So now that should fix it. There you go. There it is. It, it wasn't added because it's... I added a pivot to it. Okay. Nope, it's not working. I'm, I'm pause, stop it and then replay it. Alberto mentioned, Alberto, that's who made the graph. Thank you for the name. I was forgetting his name for a while. Alberto mentioned that a 180 degree turn was necessary to look out from the camera. Oh. Oh, that explains why he has his that invert. So I'm probably gonna have to do that. And I'm in perspective camera. Thank you for catching that too. I have not been in the correct camera this whole time, which would explain why we're not seeing anything. There we go. Small things like that. This camera is upside down. So let's click this capsule. I'm, that's why it needs to be 180, because look, it's all backwards. But it is working just upside down. Whoopsies. Man, I was wondering why it wasn't working. I was like, there's no way that it's not working. So I just need to add another X form. This one, the capsule's in this X form. This is my invert one. And did they change the orientation of the, so I need to add a rotation to this. What a great catch, Zia, thank you. <laughs> I wasn't even looking in the right camera. Um, it is going to be my Y or my X. Right? That's not adjusting it. Oh, I need to change the pivot of it. That's probably why. Let's stop this for a second. Let's go look at the capsule. Oh my goodness, where'd my castle, capsule go to? Where'd it go? Where are you? Oh my gosh, how'd you get all the way over there? How'd that even happen? 
it's like all the way up in the sky too. Or is it like, I don't know. Yeah, it is. That is so weird. Let's put it back in. How'd that happen? Let's find it. Oh no. Probably kill this one. Okay, now let's look at it. There we go. That was weird. I'm gonna change its pivot again. Tools. Oh, I'm running out of time. Let's center the pivot. Set it. And then this pivot needs to be corrected too. Add pivot, center it, set it. Cool, okay. Save. Oh no, next stream is starting. I gotta go guys. I gotta end a couple minutes early because everyone is going to go to the next one. Yeah, so watch the next one. I'll see you all on Monday. At least we got something working. Thanks for watching.